Yes, yes. A Rich, Akeem Richens. Welcome to another edition of Trendsetters. I'm your host once again. If you don't know me, get to know me. A Rich, Akeem Richens, Trendsetters. On this beautiful Friday afternoon in Florida. Hopefully the weather's good around other areas. I knew New York had... It's great day one day, then it went back cold the next day. I don't know when summertime's going to be in New York. Summertime might not come till June, July. <laughs> might have one month of summer in New York, but I hope the weather uh, gets good sometime along the way. Dave Myers, I got my, I got my guy, Dave Myers. I'm going to be uh, co-hosting this thing with, so I'm gonna get him on right now. We're going to talk some bills. We're going to talk some draft. We're going to talk some quarterbacks. It's going to be a very, very interesting segment here at Trendsetters. Waiting for Dave Myers to come on. Dave. Yes, sir. What yes, up? Yes, sir. What's going on, buddy? What's going Ain't on, man? man. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the weather here in Florida. I, I know you're in California. How's the weather out there? It's 85, man. Hey, <laughs> we, hey, we hate to brag. <laughs> we hate to brag. I don't, I, don't miss it. I don't miss Buffalo weather at all, man. Right. At all. Right. I know myself. I don't miss um, I don't miss the New York weather myself, man. I don't miss the New York weather at all. But I hope the people in New York that's experiencing the bad weather get good weather like us soon. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. I got family Definitely, there, so I hope man. so. Definitely. I hope so. So um let's let's get right into it, Dave. Uh Trent said this episode six. How's everybody doing? Pete, what's going on? Sophie, how y'all doing? How you doing? Uh the draft is obviously is starting to finally approach us, Dave. We're we're here. Last couple of weeks we did it. It's been it felt like a a mile away, mm -hmm. but it's definitely around the corner as uh we appear uh, approach this Friday, April twentieth. Uh, with the draft being uh, six days away. So give me your thoughts on the upcoming draft in its totality as a whole. Are you excited? What are you looking for? What are you, what are you expecting or may not expect from this year's draft, not with just with our B Buffalo Bills, but with other teams as well? Well, I think we're going to trade. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's been in the works for probably a month now. Maybe. Um, I think the only question now is where do we go? You know, rumors came out that Elway wants to get rid of the fifth pick. Um, Dorsey wants to get rid of one and four. Um, Gettleman wants to get rid of two. So you can do so many mock drafts, but it's all based off of who, who's trading, who doesn't trade. I mean, I've done so many with us not trading – and it's it's hard to gauge who you really want at right. 12 because you don't really know what's going to be there because I have a feeling the Dolphins are going to try to get into the top six. I got a feeling like the Cardinals are going to do whatever they can with low draft capital to try to get into the top 10. Um, but it's it's so hard right. because right. We, we, we got – I mean – I've been for months set on go up, pick the guy that Definitely. you want, unless you can't get, unless you can't get to one. If you can't get to one, then you're going to get probably the second best guy. But if the Cleveland Browns are dumb enough to take Allen at one, <laughs> we're fine because we we have the pick of the litter, right? You know, we we could take Darnold. I'd be okay with that. I'm I'm not. He's not my guy, but I'd be okay with that. We could take Rosen, or we could take Mayfield, and I'm I'm okay with either of those three. I'm not okay with Allen. I do not want Allen unless we don't trade up and he's there really? at twelve. So what? what so I, the, I, I'm noticing yes. Josh Allen and and oh, here we go. myself. I have some go. harsh criticism on him as well, but I'm noticing there's a lot of oh. a lot of negativity floating around Josh Allen's name uh, by fan uh, aspects, not necessarily the scouts. 
the scouts obviously view him and see him as one of the elite quarterback prospects in this draft class. But what about Josh Allen that you don't like? What do you see from him that just is not impressive to you that other professionals, paid professionals, is seeing to make him worthy of a top uh, a pick in this draft? Is, is he that good or is it all media hype mm. because of what he did at the com- because of what he did at the combine I don't care if he throws 80 yards downfield I don't care how big his hands are I, I don't I don't care I don't he can't he can't hit slant rounds he can't hit sideline routes he's a 50 percent for his career completion percentage machine mm-hmm. I don't care if he's six five I don't care that he's com- been compared to cam Newton He's not as athletic as Cam Newton. He's not as athletic as Cam Newton. He played in, in cold weather. That's that's about it. Okay, you want to come to Buffalo, that's fine. You played in Wyoming, it gets cold there, it snows there, that, that's right. fine. But, and okay, so everybody's going to say that he didn't have the talent that a Baker Mayfield had. He didn't have the talent that a, a, a Darnold had. He didn't have the talent that a Rosen had because he was at a smaller school. I don't care he's going to go play with NFL wide receivers, Right. right? And if he can't hit them, if he can't hit them when they're wide open, I, I don't, I, I just, I think that it's all the media has just pushed this guy and pushed this guy and pushed this guy. And scouts are 50 50 down, down the middle. And there was one guy that was on, that was on WGR a couple days ago. Um, and he was a guy who predicted that Drew Brees would be as good as he is. And this was back, way back when. He's, he's very well respected. He, he said that Josh Allen is the eighth best quarterback in this eighth, draft. Eighth. Eighth best quarterback. Eighth. That's, that's very interesting. When I look, at, when I look at Josh Allen, first of all, Tina, uh, Tina says, what's going on, Tina, by the way? Tina says Allen is going to be the best one. May, uh, Mayfield is going to be a bust. We're going to talk a little bit about Mayfield as well. But Allen, I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, Pierre made some good points. If you don't watch uh, the Fanatic talk in the mornings, uh, Pierre came back. About time Pierre came back with his Fanatics talk. Another great segment from Pierre with Fanatics talk. But Pierre uh, stated some interesting points about Josh Allen. He was talking about Allen is, I'm pretty sure, we're pretty sure he's hearing a lot of that negativity. And that negativity may thrive him to, to be better than everybody think that, uh, thinks that he can be. I'm um, basically paraphrasing here. And that could be right. That could be right. But at the same time, when I look at that and when I think about it, I don't think Allen's drive is go- should be any different. Any football player's drive shouldn't be any different depending on what somebody else say about you, right? It's not all of a sudden you're not going to be a, a great player because of comments all of a sudden. <laughs> so I think that right. Right. at the end of the day, you either have it, or you either don't, don't matter what anybody says about you. Um, I like Josh Allen. I like his makeup in terms of, because uh, I do believe you want to have certain guys that fit the, the stadium that you're in, the city that you're in. And Buffalo can get cold, as we all know. Buffalo can get cold. Buffalo can be a difficult yeah. place to play for a quarterback that's not used to them type of conditions. So I like Josh Allen in that retrospect. But when I look at that film, which I was able to look at a little last week, and I hear some other scouts that made other good uh, comments about Josh Allen, his eyes, his play recognition is definitely the part that scares me. Not necessarily the completion percentage as much anymore. But definitely his play recognition, how he reads the field, his eyes, his the way he scans the field, it looks a little slow for me. It looks a step behind. And he was a step behind in a conference that wasn't even a power conference in college football. So right. now you're going to translate that, right. and we're going to want you to play in Foxborough. We're going to want you to play in MetLife with those exotic right. defenses. Defenses don't get easier. It gets more uh, right. It gets more complicated <clears throat> and a lot more exotic in the NFL, yeah. and that what concerns me most about Josh Allen. I I can see a high of him yeah. of Cam Newton. I can see his low <clears throat> definitely being an EJ Manuel. Uh, when we talk about Cam Newton, yeah. uh, excuse me. When we talk <clears throat> about Josh Allen, but that's just my opinion of the whole situation. I'm gonna go ahead and read some comments right quick. Sharif, what's going on? 
Josh Allen never dominated a game like Rosen, Donald, or Jackson Mayfield did in college. Those are excellent points. Leroy, he can hit him. He just has no anticipation on his routes. Now, Dave, Leroy Winslow uh, had a comment. He can, he can hit him. He just has no anticipation on throwing routes. Can you teach? Can you coach throwing anticipation in the NFL? Can you coach that? No. Is that coachable? No. No, that's something that either you have or you don't. And it, it's easy for, for someone to say, well, we can work on his mechanics. We can work on his footwork. You know, we can work on his pocket presence. You can't teach. And I said this last time we talked a couple weeks ago. It's depth perception. You can't teach that. Either you have it and you've been doing it your entire life or you're mediocre at it. And – one thing about Allen, too, is he's on the record at the Combine saying that he has trouble reading mm -hmm. defenses. He's on record saying that he has trouble learning new defensive schemes. He can't do it. Interesting. That's, that's, why he doesn't, that's why he doesn't have the anticipation because he, does, he, he, he can't see the entire field like he should be able to see the entire field. And we just went through that for three years, right? We went through that for three years with someone who couldn't see the entire field. If, if read one wasn't good, check read two, go back to read one, and then throw it, dump it off to, you know, wh whatever your check downs are. So I don't I, – I, I just can't get on this. I mean, if Bean and McDermott and, and all the scouts for the Bills see something else in Allen – that I don't see, I have I have faith in them that they're going to make the right choice. Okay, I've been on record for months now saying that I want I want Mayfield's my guy, but if that's the guy that they go with, there better be a freaking plan in place to execute it. Because if we move up to two or one or four or five and we take Allen, God, that that's got to be that's it's got to be a sure thing because. You could have these other guys sitting there. You could have all these other guys sitting there and to turn around and have Miami trade up to six with the Colts, which has been talked about a lot, and have them take Rosen. What a slap in the face that would be if Rosen becomes their franchise quarterback. I mean, that that would be just a tough pill to swallow, in, in yeah. my opinion. And I'm just not drinking I'm not drinking the Josh Allen Kool-Aid. Right. I'm I'm not. I can't I can't do it. I can't force myself right. to do it. Right. You know? Hey, and, and I'm not – listen, I'm not mad at that assessment as, at, at all, at all. I mean, Josh Allen, he's a polarizing figure, but at the same time, he does have some red flags. He does have some flaws. Let's move on to some other quarterbacks and other teams. Uh, you spoke about some teams willing to trade out of their current pick, right? This is the year of smokescreen, but I, in, in actuality, some of the smokescreen has some truth behind it. It's not all smokescreen. So out of the teams that you named, yeah. you named the Cleveland Browns possibly wanting to trade back. You named the New York Giants possibly wanting to trade back. You named the Denver Broncos possibly wanting to trade back. Any of those teams you feel that's telling the truth, and which one of those teams do you think is just blowing smoke up our asses? <laughs> I, think, I think the legit one is, is the Broncos because I think Elway likes Keenum. I think he's all in on Keenum, and I think that if they can acquire some more picks, I think they can get a running back because they just got rid of C.J. Anderson. Um, I think they can get um, a little bit younger on defense if they want to. Um, I don't believe everything coming out of Cleveland because I think that Dorsey's trying to get people to, to – I think that everybody's going to call his bluff and say, look, you want to trade the one pick or you want to draft two quarterbacks, like which came smoke. out yesterday That's or the right day there. before. Yeah. I think, I think he's just trying to get people to bite on a trade that they may overpay on to get up to four or to get up to one. Um, the two, I think the two that are most likely is, is you got the giants cause everybody knows Bean and Gettleman's right. relationship. Um, and you got the Broncos at five. Because if the Broncos drop to 12, it's not that big of a drop-off. Um, and they can still get an amazing player at 12. You know, they can still get um, a line, but one of these stud linebackers. They can still get one of these stud safeties that, that's coming out. Um, 
And shit, if they want to take a quarterback at 12, why not? I mean, the problem I have, though, is with John Elway, is everybody thinks he's such a great evaluator of talent. The dude traded up to draft Paxton Lynch. And how'd that work out? Right? So if he's all in on Case right. Keenum, is that – is that, a, is that a smoke screen or is he really think that Case Keenum is the guy for they, they got him for two years? So but I, I'd be I'd be alright with five. I mean at five you're gonna get one of the big four. Or right. big five if you want to put out. I mean me personally I just can't imagine the Cleveland Browns trading back anymore the cleveland browns has been trading picks for years this is one team that if you want to look at uh, a fan saying hey trading back getting extra picks necessarily doesn't do much for you because you don't know what you're getting the cleveland browns is a prime example of that they've been trading back picks one of the only teams in this nfl that i know that hasn't had a franchise quarterback in years that's had a top selection in the draft in years and Persist on continuing to trade back. It just never made sense what the Cleveland Browns philosophy was back in the past. In comes Dorsey now. In Uh comes Dorsey. I think Dorsey is actually is actually a brilliant mind at GM. I really do. I like that's one of the best moves the Cleveland Browns have made in a long time, making uh, Dorsey their new GM. They have the first pick and the fourth pick in the draft class with a multitude of other picks uh, along the rest of the draft. I just don't see them trading out either of those spots. I just don't see it. You, They're in a yeah. good position where they have money. They capitalize a lot on free agency, getting Tyrod Taylor, getting uh, Jarvis Landry, getting a lot of guys that can help their team, a Carlos Hyde. Now they have the draft. You have the number one pick. You have the number four pick. If I'm the Cleveland Browns, I'm keeping all my picks, and I'm building around the success I feel I had this whole off season. Now, with the New York with the New York Giants, I would love to get the two. A lot of people is talking about this three t- three team trade that's involved with us and the Colts. Honestly, I believe that may be too much, too rich for our blood to yeah. get up to. If I'm thinking about it again, if yeah. you love your guy, you got to go get your guy. But I'm trying to I'm trying yeah. to minimize the picks I give I give up and still get the guy that I want, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And to me, the that, only way yeah, no, yes, that sir, makes the only way that makes sense is if I trade the seventh selection. If I'm if, if I'm getting down to Tampa Bay and certain guys fall. If I'm getting down to Oakland at eight, certain guys fall. Then I'm willing to give up a couple yeah. of picks. But to move from twelve to two seems a bit much. When we lost a lot of guys around along our offensive line, and we need our quarterback on defense as well, uh, I really feel Sean McDermott needs that quarterback on defense, and, and that linebacker is a necessity for us. So although I would love to get yeah. the two, I think it will cost a whole lot to get there. Then brings – Yeah, I think – hold hold on. I got, I got one for you. So because last – when we, when we talked last time, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm sorry. Um, when we talked last time, I, I said seven might be a, the sweet spot because I think you can still keep 22 if you get to seven because you can give them something maybe in the second or third rounds and then maybe something next year because they're only dropping five spots. So if you can keep 22 and hear me out, keep 22 and trade back and re- recoup those picks that you just got rid of to get up to seven. Right. You know what I'm saying? Trade with somebody, you know, that's that's maybe at like like Philly or someone who's got a really high pick that wants to get back down lower that they see somebody on the board, make some calls and say, I'll take, I'll, we'll drop back six spots, but we want your second round pick or we want your third round pick. So you can recoup some of those picks because there's this, this draft is loaded. We can get starters in the second round. There's no, there's no doubt we can get first day starters in the second and possibly the third round, and I think that seven's the sweet spot. Now, would I want us to go for the gusto and friggin' go for number two or number one and just bam, we're done, we're getting our guy, no shit, this is who we right. want, we're done. Yeah, but there, there's always a cost, and everybody's gonna say, well, 
who cares? You got $100 million next year, and you can just go buy all these young free agents and this, that, and the other thing. But what, what, what team are we going to put on the field this year? So we get it. So, okay, so say we draft Josh Allen. He's a project, right? So A.J. McCarron's your starting quarterback unless Peterman comes on at some point in camp and he, he right. wows us. So then you're starting A.J. McCarron for two years, right? Possibly. So we're back to square one. You might as well just go to seven and then get whoever's right. there at seven. At, I the, mean, at the same time, we don't know how the Buffalo Bills brass feel about Josh, Josh Allen. We don't know for sure. Everybody says right. that he's a project. Everybody says that he's not ready. But we don't know the actual thoughts and the yeah. minds that we have in our organization. My Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott, for all we know, they might think Josh Allen is the guy. And not only is he the guy, he can come, come in, compete this year for a starting job. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what they're thinking? I'm going to take some more comments. Yeah. Tina. Tina says, hey, you're one of my faves. If you're talking about me or Dave, we both appreciate it. We definitely both appreciate it. Uh, Leroy <laughs> says, May, uh, Mayfield is the guy I have become I have become to like, that I want to win ment- uh, that I want to win mentality alone, man. And Baker Mayfield, talking about Baker Mayfield, I really like him. I really like Baker Mayfield. I like his accuracy. I like his I like his attitude. He does have some maturity issues, but that comes along with age. But when I see Baker Mayfield, the more the, the closer the draft becomes, I'm looking at New York Jets all over Mayfield now. It's like it's like yeah. it's like I, I'm, unfortunately I yeah, see the same I'm thing. I'm seeing New York Jets. I'm seeing I'm just I can't get the New York Jets out of my head yeah. now every time Baker Mayfield comes May, Baker Mayfield name comes up. So that's why I, I'm kind of off the Baker Mayfield train because in my heart of hearts, I believe he's gonna be a New York Jet come Thursday night. Your thoughts on any thoughts on uh, Baker Mayfield? Yeah. No, I can see the New York City limelight being a perfect fit for him because the culture is not the same as it is in Buffalo. Yes, that dude will fire a team up, run through a wall. He'll give you his emotions on his sleeve, but I don't know if that's something that Bean and company are on board with. I mean, I'm okay with it. I want that guy to go out there and light a fire under somebody's ass and say, look, let's go win a fucking game, and I don't care what we got to do it, and he'll do it. But – I've seen too many things where the Jets are in absolutely in love right. with him, right. and they want they want that guy and that personality that would fit in with the New York City life and and all that right. stuff. So we'll see. The one team though that's starting to catch some some steam is the Dolphins. I'm I'm a little concerned about the Dolphins. We cannot let them right. get ahead of us in this right. freaking draft because I know that I know they like Josh Rosen. So um, we can't let them get to get to six unless we have five. Hey, hey. I mean, or four. Or I'll double that. I'm concerned with the Patriots as well, man. The, the Patriots uh, The Patriots never draft well. I don't think the New, uh, New England Patriots, honestly, as long as Tom Brady is, is the quarterback, I really don't think they give a damn about draft picks. I think they accumulated them draft no, picks don't. to want to get one of these QBs, steal them right from under our nose, yeah. come draft day. And they're concerned yeah. just, just as much as the Dolphins. Those two teams – in my own damn division, yeah. I'm very concerned about uh, getting quarterbacks in this NFL draft. Is the Patriots I'm very concerned? Yeah, but you got to think there's got to be a contingency plan for for Brady, right? Everybody was just going to think that Brady was going to retire, Belichick was going to retire. They're just going to friggin' ride off in the sunset. Patriots are going to suck. Robert Kraft is not going to want to have a losing season or a losing franchise. He's going to want to keep that shit going as long as he possibly can. And I can see them making another trade to get in at least the top ten to get somebody. And I know they like they like Rosen too. So I mean, because he's he's Brady esque, where he's he can come in, he, you know, he's he's in shape and and he'll say all the right things and he'll be the PR guy and keep to himself and you know just just go in and perform. And that scares the shit out of me because I thought that we were going to finally, finally get ahead of all these damn teams. And now all this shit's coming out saying that everybody wants a freaking quarterback. And that's why I say just go get number freaking two. Just go get number two and be done with it. Just take the guy you want. Because when you think about it, I mean, as much success as Kraft and Belichick and Tom Brady all had, Belichick and Kraft are going to want to win without Brady. I know there is talks right. in-house or talks in Patriot land, speculations that who's, who's really 
the engine of that shift? Is it Tom Brady? Is it Bill Belichick? Is it Robert Kraft? I'm pretty sure Belichick and Kraft are saying to themselves, well, shit, I'm an excellent coach, and I want to keep this thing going even after Brady leaves. Yeah. And I'm sure Brady's saying, well, shit, right. the Patriots ain't shit without me, and I'm going to show you once I leave. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty right? sure that's, that's yeah. in both uh, players' minds and the owners' minds. And if I'm, a, if I'm an owner or a coach – in this draft, I'm doing what the hell I got to do as a Patriot uh, in the Patriot right. organization. I'm doing what the hell I got to do to go get that quarterback. I'm going to ruin somebody's freaking day. Yeah. I'm going to ruin the Buffalo Bills day. I'm going to ruin the Miami Dolphins day, uh, the Arizona Cardinals day, and get one of these quarterbacks that they were supposed to get. And that is my biggest fear in that whole situation. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more because I can't see them just saying – all right, Tom, thanks for the eight Super Bowl appearances, the five rings. See you later. All right, we're good. No, they're going to they're gonna want us to keep going. They're going to want to keep going because the, the egos, those three egos are the biggest egos in professional sports. Those three guys have the biggest friggin' egos, and they're not just going to say, all right, we're done. All right, I'm going to go go off right off into the sunset. They're going to want to keep this right. shit going. And the only way that we can stop that is just getting better. And – between the Jets, the Bills, and the Dolphins, the only one of the three teams that I see that is is looks like they're we're trending upward is the Bills. We changed the culture, we changed the coaching staff, we changed the GM. We finally got an owner that has, you know, open pockets that's willing to spend money, willing to do things for the city. He's all in, and if you're the Patriots, you have to take notice in this. You have to know that we're we're not. Bean's not screwing around. Last year, he traded all those players away when nobody was trading players. And now look at what happened this year. Everybody's freaking trading players now. Everybody's right. getting traded. And I said that months ago that Bean, I'm not, I don't want to say he started a trend, but when he traded Sammy and when he traded Darby, you don't see that shit just happen like that right. in the offseason. Like, players get released occasionally because of salary issues, whatever. But then look what happened at the trade deadline. Boom, boom, boom. People are getting moved. Then this offseason, oh, they won't cut Des Bryant. They right. won't do that. Boom, Des Bryant. You know, all this stuff starts happening. And, and I think I think that the Patriots have to see that the friggin' writing's on the wall, that we're not fucking right. around. We're looking to change this friggin' team, change right. this division, and do the right thing for the future. But that's, that's another story for another day. Sure, indeed. Getting some more comments. John Jankowski, dude, you have no clue or education. I don't know. I don't know who who he's talking about. Who he's referring to? Who's I don't he know talking who he's about? talking about referring to. He he can challenge any of us at any time. But we love that. That's a good comment. When you get hate hatred in your comments, you're doing something right. So we are gonna move along. Sarah, what's going on? Uh, Sharif, the first nine weeks with the rookie quarter quarterback is going to be crazy for a rookie. Now he said Sharif Cole said them first nine weeks. The schedule did just come out yesterday. Buffalo Bills schedule. Me personally, I'm not. I don't go crazy about schedules because we already know who we're facing. It's just when we're facing them. But looking at our schedule, yeah. in hindsight, what do you think about it? Do you see any tough stretches there? Do you like our schedule? You hate our schedule? Give me any thoughts about our schedule that just came out last um, night. Um, I like that we don't. I like we don't have any Thursday games. I do like that. Um, we finish at home with. The, the back eight, we got five of eight games at home. Um, I think that will help us. Plus, we play some warm weather teams at home late in Buffalo, so I think right. that will help us. Um, the, the, fir the first eight games, but, again, we don't know how good these teams are really going to be until we get to preseason, right? right? I mean, every season is a new season. People could have had the Bills on. Yeah, they could have had the Bills on the schedule last year, you know, and, and said right. that's a win, that's a win, that's a win. And then, you know, we went into Atlanta and beat them when they, they hadn't lost yet. We won, we beat Denver. So, I mean, we open at Baltimore, which that's, that's, a, that's a push. We don't know how good they're going to be. Um, revenge game week two against the Chargers. That'll be interesting um, to see. Um, and then we got the Vikings and Packers. The first, first four games, games is tough, I man. Mean, it's tough. If, if, you, if, you, if you think about yeah. the teams traditionally, yeah. it's, it's tough. It's tough. 
That's the tough, toughest part of our schedule is our first I mean, part of the season, in my opinion, if I had to look at it. I, I, another thing, too, is no West Coast games, no London games. So they're all they're all 1 o'clock games except the Monday night game against the Patriots. So they're all 1 o'clock start times. So that's – that might be something too. No, how, no how, yeah. They're all how one o'clock. Feel about that, by the way. Out of all the games, they want to put us on prime time one game in a season, one game this season, which is fine. And out of all the games they want to put us on prime time, they want to put us on a Monday night against the New England Patriots. Is is how do you feel about that? Is the NFL trying to screw us and trying to let us know, I, okay, fans, this is have, why we only put y'all on one time because y'all about to go out and get yeah. smoked. What's the idea behind that? I was, I was. I was thinking about that yesterday, too, because I was like, I don't know if I should be pissed because we're not on prime time. But then again, you know, last year, the whole underdog mentality, no one no one is giving us a chance. But then I was like, the NFL's thinking, okay, Bills, you want to complain about not being on prime time? Well, guess what? We're going to put you on prime time against the yes. Patriots, and they're going to smack your ass. <laughs> so... You know, you yeah, know what I'm saying? I, I, that's the first so, thing that came to my head as well. Is it, I, it feels like a setup. It just feels like a, a, a big setup. The only the only way to shut them up is is to let the Patriots come in to New Era Field and and beat them on Monday night. That's the only way to to shut that criticism down. I mean, definitely. I I, I don't think it's a big. If you look at all the prime time, the average schedule for all the teams in the league, they each get. I think the average was like two or three primetime games, and we got one. So I don't know if there was logistics involved. I don't know if the NFL doesn't like the Bills. I'm not into all that, you know, those theories about the NFL hates the Bills and all that shit. But go in and beat beat New England hey. at home, and then next year get more primetime games. Hey, I mean, it seems it's, it's – we don't have. I to, think our market have also has something to do with it. The mark, the Buffalo market always has something to do because I'm looking at the New York Jets. The New York yeah. Jets finished five and eleven. They got a Thursday night game, they got a Monday night game, and they got a Saturday game. So I'm like the Bears the Bears the Bears open up with two primetime right. games against Minnesota or is it Minnesota and then against uh the Seahawks. Like the right. freaking Bears. So I'm not I'm not getting who are garbage. Right. They're garbage. I'm not getting how the the schedule makers evaluate the schedules and how they put in these games on primetime, but once again, for our personal, yeah. for our personal uh, 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 tradition against the Patriots on a Monday night, if we wanted more prime got time games, I know us personally, we want to have to come out and perform well and, and beat the New England Patriots. That's just how I feel about it. Getting into Kathy's comment, Kathy said, I still think we don't need to trade up. I think there will be at least two, if not three, top quarterbacks left at 12. Now, we may not agree, but everybody's opinion is respected. Let's say we do stay at pick number 12. Something happens. At the end of the day, it takes two to tango. If we don't have nobody else to dance with and we have to stay at 12, who can you possibly see falling to, uh, to number 12 or falling that – or quarterback that falls that you wouldn't have thought two, three weeks prior that he would have fell in the NFL draft? We're talking no trades happen? So – Rosen. Rosen. I agree. Yeah, I think Rosen can fall to twelve. I think Rosen can fall to twelve, because um, I think. So let's let's do a mock, because me and you, we, I think we share a brain. Yeah. But let's uh, let's do a let's do a mock. Um, I think the Browns take okay. Allen. If they don't take if they don't take Allen, they take Donald. The right, definitely one or the other. I th- yeah. I think the Giants take Barkley or Chubb, at two. Okay. I don't know how you I feel about that. With, I agree with that as well. I just think that the Giants, they didn't have no no offensive uh, explosion at running back in years now. And I think that's been sorely missing. And I think with along with Dave Gettleman, he kind of likes to play mm-hmm. inside out. He likes to build offensive lines. He likes to build a good defense. It's going to be interesting because he believes in pass rushers. So it can go either way. But that running back spot with Saquon Barkley, I just think he's a game changer and he helps – further along the career of Eli Manning. So I definitely got to go Barkley number two there as well. All right. So then we got the Jets. <sighs> Take my man yes. Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and then 
I think the Browns at four will take whoever the Giants don't take at two. Barkley, Barkley or Chubb? I think they take yeah. Chubb. Yeah, I, they'll take Chubb at four because Chubb, Chubb's a whole different. Put him. Um, who's who's uh, the other defensive end on the Browns? Uh, I'm uh, like is it Miles Jarrett? We got Jarrett. Yeah, yeah. So you imagine planning if you're an offensive coordinator for that defensive line? Right. Shit. Right, man. Um, and then – I think the Broncos at five take whoever the Browns don't take at one. If it's Allen or Darnold, really? I think the Broncos take really? them. Yes. Even though I know earlier I said that they probably won't take a quarterback, I just – it's either that or they take a linebacker. I think they either take Raquan Smith or Tremaine Edmonds. I, I mean – Interesting. How you feel about that? The Broncos can feel? go either way. Um, the Broncos, they are, they are definitely a trade-back option. At the same time, when I look at the Broncos – uh, I, I I think they – I'm not completely sold on John Elway as a, as a talent evaluator. I, I believe that he was a great quarterback, and because he was that great quarterback, he's looked at on a higher status than he's, he actually is. Yeah. I think he's looked at like the Pat Riley of football. That's what – that's yeah, what I compare I John Elway to. I think he's just looked at as this Pat Riley, as this this great uh, president, overrated president. I think he may reach here. I think uh, the cornerback from Ohio State is an option. Even though I like him, he might be too high to go to five. Um, his name is not coming to me right now. Yeah. And I believe since we are uh, in need of pass rushers and the NFL is so infatuated with pass rushers, Marcus Davenport can be a reach option for them oh, as yeah. well. So that's that dude is shooting up the that dude shooting he up is. the boards, man. He is, he is. That, he's, I mean, he's a beast, but he's he's shooting up like the all I've seen the last couple of days is he he's firing up the boards like Definitely. crazy. Definitely. So, so with the loss of Talib, I think that court cornerback from Ohio State is an option. And you also you don't you, you can't get mad if pairing Von Miller up with another pass rusher in Davenport. So I believe they may go right. with one of those two options: the cornerback from OSU or Marcus Davenport. I got you. Um, the Colts at six, that's kind of a wild card. I mean, I think they need just about anything besides a quarterback. Um, maybe Raquan Smith, if he's still there. Um, they could take they anybody could. at six, really. I mean, they – And, again, you know, it's, it's there's another team that's a they, possible they trade option. They have holes to fill. They have – they can go ahead and trade back yeah. and acquire some extra second-round picks. But if they're going to stay where they're at, Andrew Luck has been getting killed since he's arrived with the Colts. I yeah. I may have to I may have to go with Nelson, Nelson here. You know, I know the Chicago yeah, Bears would love to protect uh, Mr. Trubisky, yeah. but if they had to stay where they're at at six, if Chubb is not there, if certain guys that probably they didn't like is not there, you have Andrew Luck who's been recovering for two years. Offensive lineman may be the way to go for the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that a little bit, um, and then you got Tampa. Tampa's got to get some secondary help, so maybe Derwin James from Florida State, right? Um, or Minka Fitzpatrick, one of those guys. I think they need secondary help. Now, let me um, ask you a question. And then you let me got ask the Bears about Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Why the hell doesn't he have a definite position? Yeah. I thought he was a cornerback. Is he a cornerback? Is he a safety? What's up with, with Minka? He's supposed to be this excellent player, but to me, if you don't have a defined role, how excellent are you at either of them positions? What's what's the deal with this guy? I I think he's like I think he's like Micah Hyde. I think he's kind of a chameleon. He can jump in there and do whatever you need him to do. Now, if I was him, I would say I'm a safety. So he can get drafted as a safety, come into someone's camp and say, Oh yeah, by the way, I played corner. Or be a corner and say, I want to be drafted as a corner. I don't know if he's trying to elevate his draft stock by saying he's a safety. And just, I'm a safety. My agent's telling everybody I'm a safety. There's a handful of safeties out there, so maybe he wants to be considered the best one. I don't I don't know. But the only person I can compare him to is, is Micah Hyde, who you can he can play some corner. He can play some safety. Um, if, I mean, you're, if you're the Tampa GM and you need secondary help, who are you drafting, Micah Hyde or, or Duran James? Micah I, mean, Hyde I, mean, I mean, Micah or Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick or Duran James? Who would you draft? You Derwin would draft Duran James. James over Fitzpatrick? James. 
Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Interesting. Yes. Why you I don't, don't know that? about that. <laughs> you I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I like Derwin James. I I do see I do see some Cam Chancellor traits in Duran James. I can't see him playing linebacker in sub packages on third down situations. I think he can yeah. be a rangy guy. I like Duran James, but I may I, I like Minka Fitzpatrick, man. I, I like I like what he brings to the table. I think he's he's a, a, a solid all-around player. I think he could cover a little better than Duran James. I believe he's more sure-handed of a tackler. That's just my opinion. You could go either way. Steak or lobster there at that at that selection. Yeah. But me personally, I think I'll go uh, yeah. Minka with that with that selection. That's solid. I respect that. That's solid. Um, and then 49ers, you take, I think, whoever – Whichever one's not drafted, as far as they, their secondary needs needs some work. So I think you take if you got Fitzpatrick there, if James is there, um, and then the Raiders will take a linebacker. I think they'll take either Tremaine Edmonds or Raquan that, Smith. Hey, that, that's that's actually because, what I think about San Francisco as well. I think I think the Raiders would yeah. take any linebacker San Francisco doesn't take. I think San Francisco is in desperate yeah. need of a linebacker. Tremaine Edmonds, Raquan Smith can definitely be an options. Uh, uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, especially with the recent developments of, of Ruben Foster. I think he got some felony charges. Who knows when he's going to be ready yeah. and available. So I think San Francisco and Oakland can both take linebackers. It's, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Let me let me get into some more comments. Marie says, uh, if he can't see the field, we don't need him. And Allen. Pete says it's Baker. Sharif Cole says, how how you 6'5 and can't see the field as a QB? <laughs> Uh, that, that's funny, Sharif. <laughs> talking about Allen? Yeah, he's talking, he's talking about, about Allen? Allen there. He's talking about Allen. Uh, Leroy said... You can see over the... the Le- Leroy yeah. said, I think his arm is that everyone in love with Allen. It's definitely his arm. It's definitely his arm. Uh, Leroy says, I'm with Dave, man. I really like Mayfield. The dude is gonna, gonna do what he has to do to win. Uh, Leroy says, 5 to 10 is where we should, we should trade it. We should trade up. I definitely agree with that. Leroy says, Browns and Broncos, I think, want to trade. Giants want to stay at two. Kathy says, they all have red flags. I still think we should do something for Foles. I think we give him a pick in every round. A pick in every round. We need, we have two picks in. So what you think about Nick Foles? When you're looking at the uh, the six QBs or the top QBs in this draft, and then Nick Foles recently said he would love to be a starting quarterback again in this league before he retires. What do you think about the 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 proper the proposition people can make for Nick Foles? Uh, that's a tough one because he balled out in the playoffs. I mean, I'm not going to lie. But did he ball out because of him? Or was it the system? Was it the combination of both? Or was it his was it his offensive oh, coordinator who's now the head coach of the Indianapolis right. Colts? Right. I mean, I mean, yeah, you could say that when he was with St. Louis, he wanted to retire, but Jeff Fisher ruins quarterbacks. So the the you know the year that he you know he threw what two interceptions or something a few years back, he had like twenty seven touchdowns and two picks Definitely. or something like that. I'd have to go back and watch some film on what system he was running because. If he only can do that in the run run pass option, then it's going to become predictable at some point, right? I mean, I think that's like if you have a mobile quarterback, it comes it becomes predictable at right. some point, right? So you learn how to prepare for it. Now, I I think that he can be a starter in the NFL, but would you rather have a guy? What's he? Twenty nine. I believe, so. I believe I think he's so. Twenty nine. Would you rather pick a guy who's twenty two or twenty three? Or would you rather go with a guy who's 29? Now, yeah, he's got a proven track record. He's the Super Bowl MVP. I get that. But if you're going to give up all these picks to go get the Super Bowl MVP, you might as well give up all these picks to get the future franchise of the quarter of the the future franchise quarterback. Yeah, the team, and right? save a lot and save less money. I'm pretty sure with them draft picks is going to is going to come 20 million cap hit some point or another with Nick Foles. He has to get paid. Yeah, and and Foles is going to. He's going to require a salary that we can't give him this year. We can give it to him next year. But if you if you draft a quarterback, you got him on a rookie deal. You sign him for a fifth-year option. 
and let them ball out for five years and then let them give them all the money in the world at the end right. of the deal, right? I mean, Foles comes in and what, what if he wants 15 million? What if he wants 20 million? And then you're, you're stuck next year in a situation in 2019 where you're starting the quarterback process all over again because what if Bean doesn't want to pay him $20 million because we went 7-9 and nine and he was an average quarterback? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a rookie quarterback come and start, go 6-10, and 10, mm-hmm. get a pick in the top 10 if we don't trade away the first pick next year, making $1.5 million you know, right. against the cap, use that money – to get more free agents next year instead of paying a guy who's then going to be 30, 20 million dollars right. when you can get the same production possibly. I mean, I, I think you can go either way with it because again, he's got that big ass friggin' Lombardi trophy that he's going to push right. in everybody's he's face push, and say, definitely. look, I only, yeah, I played, I played five games at the end of the season and then I went on this crazy tear. And if you watch the Atlanta game, the divisional playoff game, he didn't play that good. He didn't. They 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 should have lost that game. Right. Atlanta had the Atlanta had the ball with two minutes left and could have won that game. And he he balled out against Minnesota and he balled out against the Patriots. But I don't know. I I don't have a a quick answer for. It, it's it's you have to have a lot of thought behind it because you're gonna you're gonna give up a lot to get them, and you're gonna spend a lot next year, which we have cap cool. But draft a quarterback. Start over. No more of this retreading shit. Like, get somebody fresh. Get. I'm so sick of the freaking Fitzpatrick's of the world and the freaking Kyle Orton's of the world. Get somebody who you draft, you believe in, you groom, and he's your freaking guy. Give him the keys. Tell him to get in the fucking Ferrari and drive off. That's oh, okay. That's well, I guess uh, Tom. Tom. I guess he decided to stop being ignorant. He says, take Jackson at 12, which is a very interesting take, Lamar Jackson. Let's say we don't have two to tangle. Donald is gone. Allen is gone. Mayfield is gone. Rosen is gone. And we're stuck at 12. How do you feel about the prospect of drafting a Lamar Jackson? Or would you wait until a later round, maybe the second round, and you... Yeah, yeah, that's me. You did? Oh, there you are. Okay, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I apologize about that. Lamar Jackson at 12, if the other top quarterbacks are gone, or what do you think about a prospect in a later round? Derek Carr was, was selected in the second round. Uh, you have Jimmy Garoppolo that was selected in the second round. What are your thoughts on a sleeper? Maybe the Western Kentucky quarterback, Mike White. Maybe Kyle Luletta. How do you feel about those guys? I actually like Mike White a little bit. I like that he's accurate. I like yeah. that he's uh, he's efficient. <laughs> I think Mike White can be another poor man's Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, how, how how much better or how good he can actually be in terms of comparing him with Jimmy Garoppolo? I'm not sure 100 percent because I don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo is 100 percent. But I can definitely see Mike White as a guy that can be a later round pick and being and having some success in the NFL. Give me some thoughts on that. Well, I mean, if you look at the rest of the first round, who's taking quarterbacks besides the, the Cardinals, right? In the first round, that's probably the only other team left that that needs a quarterback, right? Um, and, and what? If we if we can't my bad I'm throwing something at you throwing something at you right quick Ben Roethlisberger has been con- who's to say the Pittsburgh Steelers is not looking in that quarterback direction themselves I mean we can speculate just speculating a little bit Ben Roethlisberger he doesn't have too much time I don't think so Pittsburgh can be an option but I definitely agree with you Arizona is probably the last on the list. What about what about San Diego or L.A.? 
Mm-hmm. Rivers is getting old. He's the same age as Drew right. Brees, right? He's, he's getting there. Or same Eli Manning. They're the same age. They came in the same year. So you got to have a contingency plan for that, right? I mean, he probably has two, two three years left. Um, but if we can't get in to get one of the top dogs, I'm okay with taking a quarterback later. I think you take you use 22 and 12 and you pick the best player available. Why not get a wide a stud wide receiver that is cheap because he's a draft pick? Why not get uh, Van Der Esch at 22, mm. who can be Luke Keekley mm. 2.0? You know what I'm saying? That, so that wouldn't that wouldn't be cons- I don't I don't I don't hold on hold on I don't hold on <laughs> hold on because I like I like Lamar Jackson but I don't want to waste a first round pick on him. Does that so make, does that if, make if sense? So if he was to happen to fall out the first round and become a second round, he's sitting there at round two, pick 53. If, if if Mason Rudolph is gone, then yeah, maybe. 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 A little right. bit. Maybe. Because we had this conversation. That I, I don't think that he has the best arm strength. I don't think that he's the most accurate quarterback. I don't think he throws the best deep ball. But if I'm a defensive coordinator for any other team, I do not want to. Pl- I do not want to have to plan to play against that man. Agreed. Agreed. Twice a year. I can agree okay. With that. that being said, that being said, there's the old adage that he makes plays. He does. He makes plays, but there's going to be a time when he needs to play with his arm. There has to be a time. So, I mean, I. He wouldn't be my first choice if we're in the second round and we still need a quarterback. He wouldn't be my first choice. But if he's there and, and say, say Rudolph's gone and, and the Whites are gone and the Lalettas are gone, then what, why not take a flyer on the guy and see, you know, see what he's got? And I hate all the people that compare him to Tyrod because that's a joke. So let's right. – no, I don't want to see anybody say that he's, he's Tyrod 2.0 because he's not. He's not at all. It's a completely different player. Definitely. So it, it, would it be a failure if, if we get a draft, if we get a, a quarterback – draft a quarterback in the second round or later, wouldn't a lot of fans consider that to be a failure because we didn't go and get our guy. We didn't go and get our man. Would that be considered a failure? No. No, because we we don't make those phone calls. We don't know what they're mortgaging to get the to the top, into the top five, top ten. I don't think it would be a failure at all. If you can get two guys that can start from day one in the first round, how is that a failure? Yes, we didn't get our franchise guy. This was the best opportunity we have. But have you met Brandon Bean? How do we know next year he won't make a trade and go get somebody that's a starting quarterback right now? How do you know A.J. McCarron might not be a decent quarterback? We don't. We don't know. Um, I don't think it would be a failure. I think that we could still come out of this draft with some more pieces on offense, some more pieces on defense, and then, shit, next year spend the money. Open the wallet, spend the money, Bean. We got a ton of money next year. Hey, so absolutely right, absolutely right. Now you talked about you, you, you know who's you know who's a free agent next cool. year, right? Who's a little bit, who's a little bit older? Who's the quarterback? Uh, who that who would that be? Can't think of it off. Matt Ryan. Really? He's Matt a free Ryan. Agent. Yep. That's yep. very interesting. <laughs> He's. He's only thirty years old. Very interesting. Very interesting. I, I like Matt Ryan, but when, but in that free agency world, especially with a quarterback, it's just it, in in my opinion, it's just like the draft. It's a it's a crapshoot. But the only difference is the quarterback gets to choose where he want to play. Now, what is what's the probability of franchise type quarterbacks leaving where they are to go play in and for Buffalo? That's that's how I that's how I see it when it talks talks about quarterbacks. Any other position we can fight for, but when we talk about quarterback, do Matt Ryan really want to leave Atlanta to go to Buffalo? And that's what I I worry about in terms of getting a free agent quarterback. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I was just throwing that out there because I think Bean has proven that he's the most unpredictable GM that right. we've ever had. And he's one of the most unpredictable GMs in the friggin' NFL right now. So, I just, I personally, I can't see them not trading up. I just don't. Everything, everything that he's been saying, the 
expressions on his face when he's asked questions in a press conference. It's like he's waiting to just be like, ha-ha, gotcha. Guess what? It's happening. It's happening. So what do you what do you say to those people that say Baker Mayfield is Johnny Manzu? That is some bull. Yeah. You know what? Okay. Some bullshit. Some Why? bullshit. Because Baker Mayfield, first off, is a is just a, a more complete quarterback. Baker Mayfield is a better leader than Johnny Manzo was. Baker Mayfield didn't he had one off field off the field incident. He was twenty in college. Give the man a break. He ran from the cops because he was drinking. Give the man a freaking break. Manziel already had all these problems his senior year, like a ton of them coming right. out of college. And the writing was on the wall up to the draft that this guy's got problems. This guy has mental problems. This guy has a drinking problem, whatever it is. If you look at, and I'm not a stat guy, and I, and I say that because I, I think stats don't speak much, but compare the two. It's not even close. You want to talk about QBRs, that's fine. That's 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 a bad stat. But he's just a proven I, I just feel like Baker Mayfield is just a more complete passer. His long ball's better, his footwork's better, his mechanics are better, his pocket presence is better. He's he's better outside the pocket. I just feel he's more of a complete passer than Manziel. I don't think Manziel's bad. I think the dude's got demons in that that hurt his career. Because um, when he played, he was all right. I mean, he was he, he wasn't bad, but I just I hate those comparisons, right. just like I hate the the Josh Allen to Cam Newton comparisons. I mean, they're two different people. They're two different because one guy looks like another guy because he's six feet because he's six foot one. He's right. Johnny Manziel, and he's, and he's no, six foot five. He's not, Cam Newton. Not, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. White, white right. chocolate. You know what right. I never understood as much as. Watching Johnny Menzel come out, his whole process from Texas A&M to the NFL, his short-lived NFL career, he was on ESPN week after week for going to different type of parties and doing different type of things and being basically the center of attention. And the media continued to say, well, he's just a kid. He's just a kid. He's not doing anything wrong. He's just, he's not committing any crimes. He's just being a kid. I don't see anything wrong with it. And now, a couple years later, we find out Johnny Menzel <laughs> actually had a problem. <laughs> so now we get to Baker yeah, Mayfield, right? and he was running from the law after drinking, and now he's this doom quarterback. He has this biggest red flag. Right. I don't understand how the media right. portrays and where they get their information to portray these people from. I, I find it very fascinating. Yeah. If if it was up to me, and I'm not a scout, if it was up to me, if you're looking at the big four, right, we're talking about Mayfield, Darnold, Rosen, and Allen. Okay, what's the knock against Mayfield? He's too short, and he's he had that one off-field issue, right? Okay, so is that worse than a Josh Rosen who's had multiple concussions, shoulder injury, a knee injury, um, uh, Sam Darnold, who can't hold on to the goddamn ball, throws interceptions, um, has the personality of a freaking choir boy, has no, has no positive attitude. He stands on the field like he's a fucking right. zombie. Um, and, and then you got Josh Allen, who can't hit the broadside of a barn and is, is not athletic at all has no depth percent. I mean, I can go on and on. So which of all those issues, because everybody has everybody, red flags, yeah. right? Which, which of those is worse? The three that are not named Mayfield, I would take him over the three of them in a freaking heartbeat. And it's just, I can't vouch for the guy anymore. I've, I think I've exhausted all my shit on, on the Fanatics page and on, on Facebook <laughs> and, and Instagram. So... I'm not Brandon Bean. So there's only so much I can do, right? So talk, talking about so. – yeah, you're exactly right, by the way. Talking about uh, one quarterback that we didn't really touch on, Sam Donald. Sam Donald seems to be the guy they have, we have – out of ten scouts, you have about eight and a half scouts that will praise Sam Donald. Then you have your one and a half that will say, uh – I'm not feeling Sam Donald. What's your take on Sam Donald? How do you feel about about the guy? 
Um, one one thing that I will say about him is that he's clutch. He performs under pressure, right? He does have some some issues that I think some red flags that I think you can coach. Like you know, we're talking about Allen having accuracy issues. You can't can't fix that because you can't teach accuracy. I think the fumbling you can, can you can teach the fumbling and, and holding on to the ball and being more pocket present. Um, I wouldn't mind if the Bills drafted Sam Darnold. I'm not I'm not a Darnold basher. Um, the USC thing kind of scares me a little bit. Right, it scares you too. I'm I'm, I can't be the only one. I cannot be the only one. I'm not. I'm not into I'm not into superstitions and stuff like that, but to put his ass in Buffalo, could you imagine if he played in that game against the Colts last year? I, I just don't see him performing yeah. in that game. I just don't see him performing. I'm not saying he can't because he's a he's a grown right, ass right. man, right? Go out there, throw the ball. Hey, I... the the two I'd rather have. I'd rather have Darnold or I'd rather have Mayfield. I want Mayfield as my first choice. Darnold's my second. Rosen my third. And Allen's not even on my list. But I, I, the guy performs, and that's what we want. Fourth quarter, two minutes left. We've, we've missed that for the last three years, right? We got scared. Point, you know, point being the Cincinnati game this past year. I was like, oh shit. Both teams have scored kind of up and down the field. We got the ball. Let's go, Tyrod. Fucking right. interception. Right. God damn it. The time you choose to throw an interception is the end of the goddamn game when we need you to run around and get a first down. Look at the open receivers right in front of you. But, anyways, um, Darnold, I, I think he's got the clutch gene. He's got, he's got, he, he's got thick skin. And I think that the interceptions will come down. Every quarterback throw interceptions. I mean, shit. Everybody throws interceptions. It's it's it happens. It's the NFL, right? Everybody throws picks, right? I I think you can work on the fumbling, and I think I think that he will be one of the the most successful quarterbacks in this draft. Now, if that makes any sense, if all that if all that shit, I just it, it actually it sense. actually does it it does make sense. And you know, I I'm I'm kind of superstitious. <laughs> I, I I after me personally after seeing. Certain guys go to the same place of being unsuccessful. I'm the type that's right, wrong, or indifferent. Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just me, my personality, my persona. Mm-hmm. If I see certain guys go to the same place and I see uh, these guys that were supposed to be what they're supposed to be coming from their school and they're not, then all of a sudden I have hesitations. But looking at Donald yeah. and looking at the film and, and looking at what everybody else look at sometimes, in hindsight, he is clutch. He does make plays that yeah. that wows you. He does make plays that that make you go, "Hey, I don't know if anybody else but Sam Donald can make this particular play." And and yeah, I mean, it, if you if you look at some of his red zone stuff, it's he's it's pretty sick. He's he, he can he can thread the needle, and it's it, his fade the way he throws a fade route is pretty is pretty is and, pretty. And nasty. another thing that yeah. I I really like about Sam Donald. That kind of scares me about Josh Rosen, even though I love Josh Rosen. I love I, I, I think that durability is, is his only question. If he could stay healthy for a good 10 years, I would definitely love to have Josh Rosen on my team. But Sam Donald took a beating in Ohio State, that Ohio State game. He took a beating yeah. and he yeah. kept getting up time and time again. Yeah. He would get up. Tyrod Taylor would not have gotten gotten up one of those times. Sam no. Donald took a beating, no. and this dude kept getting up. That was impressive with his own right. I'm like, man, Sean McDermott will love this character yeah. guy right here. Sean McDermott will love this guy. Yeah. Yeah, and and if you look like you're talking about Tyrod getting – that preseason game, I mean, the hit was pretty nasty when Tyrod got the concussion. The hit against Jacksonville was pretty was pretty pretty bad. But Darnold got hit like that like like seven times in that game, and dude got right up and is like, all right, let's go in the huddle. Come on, let's and, go. And, and, <laughs> Call the next play. As, what an, is it? as another positional you know? player, as a wide receiver, as a as a defensive back, as an offensive lineman, when you see that, we all have eyes. 
We all see what's happening. After seeing right. our quarterback taking a pounding and keep getting up, that's that kind of means something for his teammates as well. So I, I, I like yeah. I like that what... I like that aspect about Sam Donald. I think he's a tough kid. Um I'm slowly coming around to to seeing Sam Donald in a Buffalo Bills uniform. What I do I think it's gonna happen? I don't, unless Dorsey is is serious about drafting Allen number one. But I, I can see Buffalo Bills and Sam Donald definitely having some type of connection, a good connection there. Yeah. I think if we trade up into the top two, I think we get we get Darnold. I, right. I hope. If Josh Allen is gone at one. Because right. I, I, yeah, I don't I don't I think Dorsey is in love with, with Allen. I mean I've seen a ton of stuff saying that Bean and McDermott are in love with Allen too. I don't know if it's just because of the size, if that's – but Darnold's a big boy too. He's not He's nope. not tiny. Not he's at all. He's not small. Not at all. You know, and that's one, that's one thing I like about Baker Mayfield too is he puts his body on the line too. I mean, if you, if you watch – he's a lot more athletic than people give him credit for. I mean, he had 20-something rushing touchdowns, over 1,000 yards rushing his career, so he does it when he has to. And if you watch some of the shit – I mean, he'll, he'll die for a pylon while he's getting just obliterated by a DB. He does it, and he gets up. Um, and that's why I have a fascination with Cam Newton because not only – I mean, I lived in Charlotte for 15 years, but um, he puts his body on the line for the team. And, yeah, he's, he's a glory hound a little bit, but all the, the pounding that that man has taken, I can't see Josh Allen doing that. I can't see Josh Allen, if you want to compare him to Cam, I can't see him, all right, go out there, get six yards on a third and, a third and five, and put your body on the line – and get the first. I don't see him doing that. I just don't. I don't hey know. man, hey, I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm not that mad at that at all. We've been running a while here. I, I haven't even noticed. I, we may be. I know. Are we an hour? Did we hit an hour? Oh, I don't oh, know. I, I, I can't tell neither. I think so. I think so, man. Um, it's been a it's been great <laughs> great things to talk about. I'm gonna take some final comments before we get out of here. Uh, Sam Mazza says, I came. How do you rank? How do you think the QBs rank coming out? Ah, very interesting. Me, my personal rankings, I'll let you go right after, Dave, if I do a top five right quick. My personal rankings, I have Mayfield as my favorite quarterback. I have Mayfield as my favorite quarterback. I had Josh Allen a couple weeks ago. I, I Not Josh Allen, excuse me, Josh Rosen a few weeks ago as my next guy. But the durability questions are are kind of concerning to me with, with a Josh Rosen. I love him. I love what he can possibly do. It's just how long is he going to be able to do it for? And do I need another a top-tier quarterback behind a Josh Rosen because of his durability issues? So that's, that's the main reason I dropped Josh Rosen to third and put Sam Donald as my second quarterback uh, leading up to the draft. I got Sam Donald number two, who's came a long way. I had Sam Donald as last at one point, five. Came a long way. I put uh, Josh Rosen at three. I, I have to go um, at four. It's very interesting. Um, I have to go Josh Allen at four. I, ha I, I think Josh Allen, I, I'm not sure about his accuracy. I'm not sure about his eyes. But if you can put it together, there are, there are guys that we thought negatively about in the past that put it together. If he can put it together, he can be – uh, a very, very interesting prospect, and we can look back and regret who we selected in the draft. So I got Josh Allen at four, and I still got Lamar Jackson at five. I like Mason Rudolph, but I still would rather Lamar Jackson over Mason Rudolph. So that's my top five. Baker, Donald, Rosen, uh, who I had up for Josh Allen, and Lamar Jackson. Who's your top five, Dave? Mine's almost the same as yours, except flip four and five. I, I think Rudolph is my fourth guy. The only thing that scares me about Rudolph is that he, the offense that he plays, the spread offense that, that they play, that's not a – I don't think that's a, a pro-style offense. I think you got five wides on every on every down. No, nah, that's not going to happen. You could be out of shotgun on 85% of your snaps. Right. No. I mean, the guy's, the guy's accurate. The guy's got a nice deep ball. Um he throws a really nice back shoulder fade, but um, I just I can't get on the Allen bandwagon. I just I hope right. I'm wrong, 
I hope I'm wrong because he seems like he he seems like he's a good kid. I mean, b- besides the fact that he's a Patriots fan, but um, I hope I hope I'm wrong because I have a feeling that he's going to be number one or number two pick, and it might be it might be us taking. You know what's crazy? A lot of people like Mason Rudolph. I, I would uh, I would argue that John White, that White, Mike White. Is 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 just is yeah, just I, I would argue I would argue John White over Mason Rudolph, man. Uh, Mike White, excuse me. I I really like. I've been watching him the last few days. I haven't watched him as much in the past as I have the last few days. The quarterback out of Western yeah. Kentucky. I really like that kid, man. <laughs> I really like Mr. White, yeah. man. I'm not going. That's that's my next quarterback. Probably my sixth yeah. quarterback in this draft class is Mike White. I mean, the thing about Mason Rudolph is he's big too. Yeah. He's six five, and you, if you if you just look at his stats, you're like, holy shit! Like, why is nobody talk about this guy? Like, forty something touchdowns, like nine interceptions, a like QBR of like one fifty seven right. or something like that. But then you go and watch film on him, and you're like, shotgun, 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 right, shotgun. Right. And you're like, all they're doing is passing. That's all he's got. Which you have to be good, obviously, to 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 be successful in in a predominantly shotgun system. But I think that transition it would be hard to be under center. To be honest with you, that's why I have issues with with Lamar Jackson. I think under center he's going to struggle. I think he's going to struggle under center, and I don't think he reads coverages as good as as the other guys. Right. But I don't want to play against him if I'm on the other team. Hey, hey, so. hey Sam Mazza <laughs> says something. Something tells me Pats are going to grab Mike White. Mike White does have that Patriots kind of vibe to him. Like I, I compare him to Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Uh, and he does have that vibe. I, I can get that sense that at uh, their second round pick, they can definitely go Mike White if they don't have two to tangle with as well. If they're not thinking about uh, moving up in the yeah. draft, I like Mike White, man. I'm, we're going to look out for at least at this quarterback draft uh, draft class 2018, and Mike White might surprise a lot of people, man. Yeah, that's why I think they might take they might try to get Rosen because he's, you know, he's. Blue collar, or not blue collar. He's he's got a chip on his shoulder. Comes from money, and he'll fit in with the personalities in in New England. And I think that's why they want him because he's like, "Yep, I'm here. Let's go. I'm gonna win five Super Bowls. Let's do now, it." You talked about all these guys being in shotgun. You talked about Mason Rudolph and a, a lot of these quarterbacks in shotgun. Are we going to see more of a transition in the NFL, even more so now than than we had in years past, of NFL coordinators doing exactly what these quarterbacks do best? And it may have to uh, transition over to a more of a shotgun league. How do you feel about that? Or you think the NFL is just going to stay stubborn and say, hey, we're going to run our traditional offense the way we want to run it. We're going to have to have guys on the center, and that's just the way we're going to do it. I th- I think that there are certain teams that will try to accommodate a quarterback, but ultimately you want the guy that can adapt, right? The guy that can understand, you know, okay, I have to change my footwork. That's why I think a lot of these teams are high on Josh Allen because I think they can feel like he's moldable into right. either one. And what I do what I do see happening too is how many teams ran like okay to, for to to go off of your example like the run pass option. Like that wasn't a big deal a few years ago. Now a lot of teams are going to start using that because it's new, hey, Philly it's fresh, a Super Bowl and it's that. hard to defend. You got because, a Super Bowl winner off it. Yeah, and if you can get a quarterback that can run it, that has control of it, it's hard to defend because is it a run play? Is it a pass play? You don't know. Um, but as far as the shotgun thing, I think that's just going to be based off your coordinator and then whoever you, whatever quarterback that you put on the field. Because if you take a quarterback like a Mason Rudolph, who is predominantly shotgun, if you feel that he's comfortable being under center, you're going to put him under center. If you want him to be shotgun, you're you're doing him a disservice because he's not really learning right. and growing. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I think that the NFL will be the NFL, and they're going to say, look, this is the offense we're running. If you're a successful offense, so say like the New England Patriots, right? Their offensive coordinator has been there forever, right? Right. Very successful because he's got Tom Brady. They're gonna—they're not gonna say, 
well, we can't. We're going to stay away from a shotgun quarterback because we don't think that our offensive coordinator can make him work. You know what I mean? We're, they're going to take the best guy that they want because they have that offensive coordinator that can make that. So I think it goes both ways. I think you got to have a quarterback that's intelligent enough to learn how to play under center, and then you got to have a team that is going to utilize the strengths of the quarterback coming in to say, you know what, maybe we should throw in some more shotguns, some five wides. Um, to kind of, you know, balance it up, b- build it gotcha. a custom to, to, you know, gotcha, man. Excellent. Excellent analysis right there, Dave. Yeah, man. It's, it's, this has been fun. The times, the time flies by when you're having fun, especially when you talk about the bills and football and the NFL mm-hmm. draft coming along It's it's a really interesting time of the year. Next year, uh, next week, this time we're going to be well into uh, our first, second and third round picks. So maybe we could come back on, we could discuss who we drafted. Uh, and how they can help the team. So yes, so, so we're do. I'm I'm off work next week. So and I'm not I'm not sick anymore. I just got over my respiratory That's thing. Good. But um, we got to do something. Right, we got to do something right after the draft, like the first round or so. We got to do something because I know I know all the other guys will probably want to go live too right after the draft because it's gonna right. be bonkers. Right. So De- I, hey, I'm definitely for that. I, like I said, the draft starts Thursday. I'm off Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm off for the entire draft. So we definitely have to come back on, get live. Well, we'll, we'll probably be chatting it up anyways during the draft. We were like, holy right. shit, did you see that? <laughs> it's gonna, so, I think it's going to be a lot of holy shits uh, come Thursday. Yeah. I really think oh, yeah. so. Yeah, because I guarantee I, – I think that this is how it's going to start. The Cleveland Browns are on the clock, and then someone's going to say, yeah. we have a trade. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it, it might not even be us. You don't and, you don't even that, know. It that might not right even be us. The scary part. So that right there is the scary part. We have yep. a trade. All of a sudden, we see the goddamn Miami Dolphins or New England Patriots up here at <laughs> at, at pick two, and we're just we're done. And then I, and then I go freaking running traffic right, real right. quick. Definitely, man. Definitely, man. But it's going to be fun. I can't wait. We're definitely going to come back on and do this again, man. Uh, everybody, we appreciate it. For those that's that's still on, the few that's still on, I know we were running a, a minute. It's Friday. I know a lot of people got a lot of things they need and want to do. So we definitely appreciate it, man. Uh, this has been Trendsetters with my co-host, Dave Myers. I'm Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Dave Myers, anything else you want to say before you get out of here? Uh, we're good, man. Yeah, we're man. good. We appreciate it, man. We appreciate everybody. We appreciate the comments, mm-hmm. good and bad. We love our team, and we just want to see our team successful. A. Rich, Akeem Richens. Until next time.